So welcome everybody to uh, seminar and to uh, Research Frontier lecture series in Westeros, Sweden, in mathematics and applied mathematics research environment. Uh, we continue with a, a lecture series by uh, Dr. Abdenur Kitoni um, and uh, on NRE algebras and his uh, um, uh, topic today for his lecture will be introduction to NRE algebras and uh, NRE uh, home algebras. Uh, so Abdenur, it's your turn. Yes. Thank you, Sergey. Thank you all for coming and welcome. So today we will be talking about NRE home algebras. Uh, we will discuss the basic uh, definitions and uh, properties and various types of uh, NRE home algebras. So to begin with, I will uh, show definitions to give a quick picture of what is a home algebra. And then give a short uh, history, very short, and then we start with definitions and properties, various types of NRE home algebras, and then a few constructions, examples, and properties. So this, everybody rem uh, knows that or remembers, I hope an associative algebra is a vector space with a, a bilinear associative multiplication that is satisfies this property. Now we have a home associative algebra, which is a generalization of this is vector space together with a bilinear multiplication and an extra linear map from A to A, satisfying this property. So uh, similar to the uh, associativity, however, we have the intervention of this alpha linear map outside, which is needed to switch parentheses, so to say. And on the other hand, we have also Lie algebras, which are vector spaces with a bilinear bracket, which has to be skew symmetric and must satisfy the Jacobi identity here. And also for Lie algebras, we have a, a similar generalization, which is called home Lie algebra, which is vector space bracket plus a linear map which satisfies the same skew symmetry property and home Jacobi identity which is similar to Jacobi identity with the intervention of alpha. Now when you, when you look here or with associativity you notice that if this linear map is the identity, then we find again our well-known definition. So how did we, uh, another thing before we move on is that home associative algebras also have this same property as in uh, associative algebras that if we take the commutator for operation, then we get a home Lie algebra with the same alpha. So now, how did we get to consider and study such uh, structures? So it all began with this uh, work with uh, Sergei and some of his former students about uh, the study of sigma derivations and it turned out that these the sets of sigma derivations do not have the property of being Lie algebras as in normal derivation but it was there was still some kind of structure and properties and it turned out that they are, 
They have the structure of a homely algebra. Homely algebras are, uh, turn out to be a generalization of Lie algebras, which contain in this, uh, the way that we just saw Lie algebras and allow for uh, more flexibility when it comes to the formations and other things. More generalization following from these gave rise to quasi homely algebras and quasi Lie algebras, which are even more general than homely algebras in which even the skew symmetry is uh, not exactly the same and the uh, Jacobi identity take, takes a more, even more general form. Then moving on, we have, uh, there is this uh, work by Abdelnasser Makruf and Sergei Silvestrov studying the, the structures, algebraic properties of all home algebras and introducing home associative algebras and other types, homely admissible and studying their properties. So I cite only this one, but there, there were several papers following this direction. Then one year later, there was this uh, first move towards moving from homely algebras to anary or home algebras to anary home algebras by Atagema Makhlouf and Silvestrov. Uh, and from this, everything uh, around anary home algebras began. I will cite also another uh, article by Yao one can see those two articles as containing most of the basic properties. If one would like to start from the very beginning, one can look at those two in this order. A lot of uh, the core information in our le uh, lecture today is coming from those two articles. So now we begin with the general definitions and properties. First, what is an anary home algebra in general? So to, we define an anary home algebra in general as a vector space A, an n linear multiplication, and a family of n minus one linear maps, which are called the structure maps or the twisting maps. This def definition is used for its generality so that we can work with uh, common properties to all home algebras. So when we work with this definition, keep in mind that these alphas here are not uh, here for no reason. They will appear in the, or they are, appear, but not here in the specific identities to each type of algebras. So now if we take two anary home algebras, we define an anary home algebra morphism to be a linear map from the underlying vector spaces, satisfying this first property of preserving the multiplications, and it should also preserve the twisting maps in this way. A short remark for those uh, familiar with universal algebra, this will, uh, the twisting maps are simply considered as, as unary operations and everything functions in following this fashion. If we consider a linear map satisfying only the first condition that is preserving the anary product, we call it a weak morphism. Now some special cases of anary home algebras. If 
the product is invariant under all permutations, then it's called symmetric. And if it, if it changes by the sign of said permutation, then it is Q symmetric. And an anary home algebra is said to be multiplicative if all its structure maps are equal and that map is an anary home algebra morphism. If moreover, this alpha is invertible, this algebra is called to be regular. Now, the more we get into these special cases, the more we get closer to the properties that we have in the classical counterparts of uh, that we may consider of home, uh, some kind of home algebras. And the, the further away from these special cases we get, the more possibilities and the more structures we get. And uh, on notation, if we have this uh, case where all the twisting maps are equal, we simply denote it as we simply denote the algebra as A, M, and alpha. So if we take again an anary home algebra and a vector subspace S of A, this vector subspace is said to be a subalgebra if first it is an invariant under all the twisting maps and if it is closed under the product or the anary multiplication. Such a subspace is said to be an ideal of A if it is again uh, an invariant under all the twisting maps and if it satisfies this property of when we take n minus one elements of the full space A and one element of S, then all the multiplication in any possible order gives an element of S. Of course, when we are working with a symmetric or skew-symmetric algebra, then only one of these elements is sufficient to have to check uh, as being an element of S to have an ideal. A uh, little point on uh, terminology. Some others refer to subalgebras and ideals of anary home algebras and home algebras in general as home subalgebras and home ideals. And such a vector subspace is said to be a weak subalgebra or a weak ideal if it only satisfies the second condition. That is, the uh, being closed under the anary multiplication either only inside S or with n minus one elements of A in the case of an ideal. So what do these weak subalgebras, weak ideals, and weak morphisms represent? They are simply the corresponding uh, notions when we take these anary home algebras as simply anary algebras. If we forget, so to say, about the twisting maps. However, if we forget about the twisting maps, we also lose the defining identity, which is one of the most important properties. Of course, we define these weak subalgebras and weak ideals, weak morphisms also because we can use them in, in some properties afterwards. So now we look at the quotient algebra of a home algebra. And now we will see why we take such a definition of an ideal. So if I take 
an energy home algebra, an ideal of A, and then the quotient vector space. I take this M bar energy multiplication def defined as follows. And I define also a family of twisting maps on this new vector space as being these alpha I bar. So the image of the equivalence class is the equivalence class of some of the image of some representative. And with those two elements, we get what we call the quotient algebra or factor algebra of A by the ideal I, and it is a home algebra, which also will be of the same type of the energy home algebra we consider basically it will uh, preserve any identity that will be considered uh, valid on the home algebra for all elements. We will see various uh, the most common cases a bit later. So now how to prove that if I take first two diff different elements of A, which are congruent. Then the difference is an element of the ideal. And by the property of the ideal being invariant under all the structure maps, we can prove the following that if I take alpha i bar of x plus i, it will be exactly the same thing as alpha bar i of x prime plus i. Those two are the same equivalence classes and we get naturally the same image, which means that these alpha i bar are well defined. Now I take two, uh, two groups of two sets of n elements of A, and I would I want to check that this multiplication is well defined. Then I do the following: you apply the definition and then add and uh, subtract with x and prime in the last component. Use uh, n linearity and then this element will be in I because of the definition of, I, of an ideal. So only remains this. We keep on going with the same process on all the other components or entries of the multiplication until we get to our final goal that if I take if I compute this multiplication on the quotient with x1 to xn or x1 prime to xn prime, I get the same result. That is the bracket is well defined or the multiplication. If we work with a weak ideal instead, what will happen? We can get a well-defined multiplication, but we cannot get well-defined structure maps from the structure maps that we have on the quotient. And, and so we will lose the structure maps and we will lose at the same time the defining identity of the algebra. And this means that we will end up with some arbitrary energy algebra with no particular property as a quotient. Now we move to the next part, talking about various types of energy home algebras. The main subfamilies, so to say, of energy home algebras are, as with energy algebras, associative type and Lie type. So generalizations of associative or home associative here and a generalization of Enli. 
following exactly the same pattern as for anary uh, uh, algebras. So here, exactly as we've seen in the very beginning, it works the same as with binary home algebras. The defining identities will be twisted in similar way. And for, which means that for every class or for every type of anary algebras, we get a corresponding class of anary home algebras in which this type of anary algebras would be retrieved by taking the, twi uh, the twisting maps being the identity. So I will recall also that for the energy generalization, every type or identity in the binary case gives rise to several types of energy algebras following from one of the possible interpretations of the considered identity. But when, mo when moving from energy to energy home, for, to each one, to each type corresponds one type of home algebras. So here we can see that as taking two steps of generalizations. The first uh, being either the home and anary or anary and then home, and it works exactly the, the same. So now let's begin. If I take an anary home algebra, it is said to be totally home associative if it satisfies this identity, meaning that if I take two n minus one elements, put in uh, two nested multiplications, no matter where the second multiplication is, in which position it is, as long as I have the twisting maps filled in in the remaining positions, I will always get the same result. Now, if you look at these, when I take all of these uh, twisting maps to be the identity, we get back the totally associative anary algebras that we talked about in the first lecture. So here you can see more how this looks like. So if uh, the inside multiplication is at first position or the second position or any random I position or in the last position. So now I will show a little example uh, in the two dimensional case this example is due to the one of the articles I cite, cited in the beginning, the one by Atagema Makhlouf and Silvestrov. So, uh, we take a two dimensional vector space, a basis consisting of two elements, and we define the ternary multiplication M and the linear map alpha as follows. So here we have dimension two ternary algebras, which means eight elements to be defined. And here we have all eight. And the twisting map will be considered on this basis as follows. So this definition gives me a totally home associative algebra considering this special case with, with only one twisting map. However, this is not totally associative. If I take this special case E1 four times and then E2 and the nested multiplications, then for first and the second, I will get the same result. However, for the third, I will get a different result.
And any home algebra is said to be partially home associative if it satisfies this identity. The sum of all nest brackets or nested multiplications with alphas should be here gives zero. The same as we we seen for uh, any real algebra. This is uh, not exactly, but refers to when we look at associativity as being the associator being zero. Again, all the variations that we talked about in the first lecture, that is weak totally associative or totally associative of type two, which uh, reverses the order in uh, when we have the, the inside multiplication in the middle or the partial associative algebras where some of the signs in here are changed. All of these can be generalized in the same way as those two we've seen here. Now for generalization of Lie algebras, we get the following. So an n-home Lie algebra is a skew-symmetric n home algebra. We denote the multiplication as usual by the bracket and it satisfies this identity, which is called the home Nambu or home Nambu Filipov identity. It is the same as for Li al uh, for n Li algebras. While we have the intervention of the twisting maps in this order in all the brackets outside of the second. Some others will call these Anary homnambuli algebras. So this identity, as we will see in the next lecture, it is still showing that the right multiplication is some kind of generalized derivation. So now I will give an example of these. Now for skew symmetric algebras, I'm forced to go a little bit up in dimensions as if I go under the, the RDT, I get only trivial examples. So I take the skew symmetric bracket and a linear map alpha. Since the bracket is skew symmetric, I can, it is sufficient to take the values of the bracket on three different elements of the basis in ascending order, which gives this. These four are enough to define a four-dimensional ternary skew symmetric in general uh, bracket. So I, I give these values and for the twisting maps, for the twisting map, which is only one here, get alpha of E1, E2 is zero, and alpha of E3, E2, alpha of E4 is E3. This gives me a N or three homely algebra, which is not multiplicative. This is in one of the most general cases, so to say that we can get. The other type of Anary Lie algebras, which is generalized here to Anary Home Lie al uh, algebra, is called Anary generalized Home Lie algebra, is Q symmetric, and it has this identity. The sum of the nested brackets is zero. While I, as always for home algebras, the twisting maps come into action outside of the, in the, the second bracket. So this can be seen as 
a an energy generalization of the home uh, Jacobi identity seen as being a cyclic sum be, uh, of nested brackets zero, being zero. The other uh, way of calling these, the other uh, terminology is to call them Henry Homely algebras. And then we also have the non skew symmetric version of N Homely algebras, which are called N Home Leibniz algebras, is an Henry Home algebra, not necessarily skew symmetric, satisfying the same. Home number Philip of identity. And these algebras can also be called Henry Home Nambu algebras. One special case of these and a generalization of Lee triple systems are home Lee triple systems, which are ternary home algebras. and having some uh, specific properties on top of the home number Philip of identity. First, skew symmetry in the first two uh, components or entries of the bracket. Second, the cyclic sum over the bracket is zero. And third is the home number Philip of identity. Here in the ternary case, it consists of four terms. So now we move to more uh, constructions, giving also more examples of uh, Henry Homely algebras and a few properties. So first of all, this generalization also of what we have seen in the first lecture of when I take the iterated bracket or multiplication of a home associative algebra and a homely algebra. For a home associative algebra, if I take this uh, iterated product twice with alpha in the outer uh, element here, it is important, of course, to pay attention to parentheses and alpha since it's not, since the product is not associative and with this ternary product and alpha square which is alpha composed with alpha I get a ternary totally home associative algebra and if the original home associative algebra is multiplicative then so is this new algebra however for the case of Lie or home Lie algebras this uh, iterated bracket works only for multiplicative homely algebras. And the result is, of course, a multiplicative homely triple system. This identity will represent the home Jacobi identity of this bra uh, bracket. Now, if I take two uh, Henry Home algebras, I can define the tensor product of those algebras by taking the tensor product of the multiplications and the twisting maps as shown by these expressions. So, here we have first first uh, component of the tensor product is in A, the second is in B, and so on. So we multiply elements of A together and elements of B together and put everything together with tensor product. And the same goes for the twisting maps. So now one would wonder what properties do these tensor products have. 
So first, if I take the first algebra being totally home associative and the second partially home associative, then the result will be partially home associative. And if the first is totally home associative and the second is energy generalized home leap, which is when I use the sum over the whole cyclic, uh, the whole symmetric group of nested brackets, then I get again a generalized Homely algebra. Now, this is a way to construct any home algebras from any normal algebras, so to say. So I take an any algebra and an algebra morphism beta and define a new multiplication B, uh, M subscript beta by simply being the M composed with beta to the left. And this gives me a, a multiplicative anary home algebra of the same type or the corresponding type to the first anary algebra. So if I have an N Li here, I get an N home Li. If I start with an N Leibniz, I get an N home Leibniz. If I start with totally associative, I get totally home associative and so on. This result in its most general form can be used to construct any home algebras from other any home algebras. So if I take a weak morphism and of some any home algebra and I define this same M beta the same way, then the result will be an any home algebra of the same type if I take beta composed with alpha i as the family of twisting maps. Moreover, if the first algebra I work with is multiplicative and I have these alpha and beta which commute, then the result will also be multiplicative. So an example on this, if we take the vector space of smooth functions from R3 to R, and we define the ternary bracket as being the Jacobian determinant of all possible partial derivatives. Then this is a three Lie algebra. Now I will take gamma, a smooth function from R3 to R3 with the, the extra property of its Jacobian, which is possible here since I go from R3 to R3, it's Jacobian to be one. Then this gamma allows me to define rho gamma as the composition to the right with gamma. And this will be an algebra morphism. So I can apply this uh, proposition we just saw and I get this bracket with this twisting map and I get a three homely algebra. So now another example or uh, construction is rather simple one is when I fix one element of the bracket to get one rt below. So I take an element 
alpha, which must have this particular property of being a fixed point of the first twisting map. And then I take this n minus one r product where I fix the first element of the my original bracket as being a, and then I put in everything else. So this will be an n minus one homely algebra. This same construction works also for n home Leibniz algebras. So we drop skew symmetry of n homely algebras and we need one extra condition on A and we get that the, the same result holds for n home Leibniz algebras. Now, this is a generalization also of another construction that we saw for uh, Lie algebras, a way to construct a three Lie algebra from a Lie algebra. So now we are in the home setting. So we begin with a home Lie algebra and we need another linear map to be the second twisting map of my future 3 d algebra. And then I take a linear form tau, which must satisfy some more condition than last time. So this is the same as the during the first lecture, x uh, tau on any bracket gives zero, and then it must satisfy this these three compatibility conditions with the alpha and the new twisting map that I have. In such a case, if I take this ternary bracket with alpha and beta, I get a three homely algebra. This result in its most general form is as follow. I start with an nary algebra, an n homely algebra, I add one uh, linear form and one linear map to serve as the new, the, the, the new, the, the extra twisting map. And the generalization of this uh, bracket is as follow. So the sum each time I take one element and it is the, the element which is missing inside here. And the signs change for every term. If I have those conditions satisfied, so first tau of the bracket is zero and the those conditions of compatibility with all the twisting maps. So here it must be satisfied for every pair of alpha i, alpha j. In that case, I will get an n plus one homely algebra. Now I will show again another construction generalizing the commutator of an associative or home associative algebra to the case of any totally home associative algebra. So here, first I will define which uh, product I will sum. So for the binary case, it's simply x, y minus y, x. But for higher R, it is, it's say not that simple. So first I, uh, I will use a set to, to be, uh, this set will be used to define words that I will use, that will show the pattern that that is to be followed. And we define the words or the n commutator words as follows. So for n equal to two, then it's simply the first and the second terms of the commutator that we know. 
and then we use this uh, definition by induction. So at uh, rank n, I have all the words at rank n minus one, and then multiply one last element a n to the right and to the left with minus. So for example, for the case of three, here are the words that appear. We have only four of them, two negative and two positive. And then those words will give me the pattern of the elements that, that I will use. So if I take a vector space, I will define for each word the map from the nth tensor power to itself that switches, so to say, or permutes the order of elements following this word and with an, uh, a potential sign. Then, if I take an energy totally home associative algebra and on this A, we define the following bracket. So all of these words I have here, put them with, fill them in with elements of A and then take the sum of all of them. Then this gives me an N home Leibniz algebra. In the, in the particular case where the RIT is three, I, I recover a Homely triple system. So it will not be any home Leibniz and home Leibniz algebra, but it will have some extra partial skew symmetry property. So this is all I have for you today. Thank you very much for coming. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate. Any remarks, any discussion are welcome. Thank you.